Hello everybody, welcome to our Combi Clamp Facebook Live demonstration. So what we're going to do here today is, is we're going to have some questions and answers. Okay, so you ask the questions, you can start asking them now. Okay, and I'll attempt to answer them in a way that you can actually understand. So yeah, we'll use paddock language for sure. Okay, <laughs> um, just before we get started and while we wait for a few people to, uh, you know, come online so they can see what we're talking about. Uh, I'm just going to introduce a few people. I'm Wayne Coffey, designer and owner of Combi Clamp. I'm fortunate enough to have Fiona, my daughter. Uh, she's head of the New Zealand sales team and doing a great job. Um, holding on to my microphone cord is my good wife Lindley. Um, behind every successful man there's always a good woman. Um, and also there's a good woman behind the camera. Now that's Viv. Now she's had nightmares about tripping over the, trying to video us. So. Uh, Somebody better make a comment, okay? So give her the confidence. Yeah, that's it, Viv, smile. Okay, so we are, we've elected to film out at, out at the farm rather than be at the workshop with all the workshop noise and trucks and trains and everything going on. So we do have rural broadband here. Um, so, so we've put in our little cell phone tower up there, the Colleton cell phone tower, which is much, should make it a bit better. Okay, so if it does go a bit, funky and you can't you can miss missing bits okay um, you can look at it later it will be online um, so you can look at it and there'll be no jitter or anything in that okay but do ask your questions if the coverage does go a bit dodgy um, right here uh, so obviously Fiona handles the New Zealand sales I handle the Australian um, sales with Australian customers and I also support Nutrient Ag Solutions. Now, that's the new name for Landmark. Um, Nutrient have done a really good uh, job for the distribution um, and it's definitely streamlined the Combiclamp business because of the growth that we've experienced over the last few years. Uh, so yes, uh, they've done really, really well. So I thank them. Um, and also the Northern Hemisphere. Now. For about the last 14 years, we've been manufacturing in Scotland, Forfa, and they've been supplying the UK, Europe, um, Ireland, uh, Canada, North America. Oh, and our Canadian agents, uh, Hooper Ag, um, they're doing great. They haven't been with us for all that long, um, but for the number of sheep that are in Canada, they've done exceptionally well. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's all pretty good. Um, what we're going to do now is, look, we need to, we for us for this to work, we need your questions. Okay, so don't be shy. The only dumb question is one that hasn't been answered. Okay, asked. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to give you a bit of an overview of the um, of the combi clamp, the standard unit and draft behind us, um, and Fiona's going to be looking at the questions that are coming in and we'll answer. If we get flooded, some of them might not be answered until our Tuesday, uh, sorry, our Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday because Tuesday and Thursday is cattle handling equipment, okay? So if you're here to see cattle handling equipment, you're a day too early, okay? So no, that's good, so yeah. I'll watch some of the questions coming in. Yes. And um, let Dad go through the features. Okay. Cool. I'll put all my notes away. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So what we've got here is we've got a handler set up out the back out there, which will run a few sheep through with um, live sheep and and show you a few of the reasons why it works so well. And we've also got just look over here, Viv. See. Here's a, here's a left-handed dagging machine. Uh, you know, like it's a standard unit with a set of curves on the back. And over here, we have a right-handed machine. Now, guess what? We don't build a left or a right-handed machine. We build the same unit. It depends on what end you hook up the draft or the approach trace, okay? So just come a bit closer. So here we go. What we've got here is, our, from my hand back, is our standard unit, okay? So what you get is your approach trace and the handler, but we're just going to start from, from as the sheep enter. We've got a hock rail here with, that is adjustable height. It's pretty good, but I don't actually use it myself much at all, unless we're doing a lot of work 
or a lot of multitasking. I put it in there. It's not a hundred percent. Our best form of anti-backing is our anti-backing ramp, but we will focus on that when we go down the accessory alley. Okay. Now what we've got here, the next component, like so that race there is one sheep long. Okay. Now those anti-jump rails are there to stop the sheep from jumping out. This wall brace here is removable, okay? You can take that out. Um, it's only put in for a traveling mode, okay? You don't, or if you've got really, really mad sheep, you might want to put them in, okay? Now these anti-jump rails are adjustable to shift up here, just like this one on the other side, okay? Now that forms a tunnel to shop, stop the sheep from jumping out. Now around here, Viv, just come around, we'll have a look at these gates. Now we do have a bit of shadow in the shoes, but, but that's all right, okay? We've got this lock here on both sides, okay? Now what that does is, when you've got the gate shut, it stops the rams from knocking the gates off the hinges, okay? While you're there, Viv. Now that's our dag sweep. When you open the gate, it sweeps the dags out, okay? So you sweep that out, and the dags fall out on the ground. Now, if we are dagging, we tend to take this little triangle gate off, okay? You don't need it because otherwise it makes a lot of noise. For me, when I'm dagging, I do most of my dagging without shutting that gate. I just sneak through the gap here. But we will show you that when we get over to the um, live sheep handling. Now, that gate catches on there. That gate there and this gate here are interchangeable. So that's actually a wall, it's not a gate. Because to change this from left to right, all we do is put the gates and that wall on opposite sides and put the race on the other end, okay? I reckon I've probably confused you, but that's all right. It'll all become clear by the end of this, okay? So all we do is put that on there. It does give us the ability to shut the sheep off. Okay, now, rubber on the floor to keep the noise down. I don't like noise. Noise scares sheep. Um, and noise, you end up with a headache at the end of the day with noisy, you know things going on so now so we've got rubber on the floor there there's rubber on the floor of the combi clamp and that there is all it is there's no compressors there's no generators there's nothing like that at all okay um, and of course we've got the lock if we need to get off the machine okay now inside the clamp here Viv I don't know whether we're going to see it because it's a little bit shady but that rubber there, there's no steel or timber behind that. That's That actually moulds around the sheep. So when you stand on it, okay, that's like the suspension, okay? Now, so that moulds around the sheep. So it's nice and quiet, okay? Um, there's, there's, and also while we're there, notice how that wall comes out. Now we've got three holes here. This, this is usually mistaken for width adjustment. It can be used as width adjustment, but there is width adjustment underneath. Um, the beauty about the combi clamp is we can handle ewes and lambs all undrafted, like weaning time, or even that month before weaning, when you want to give the lambs a, I don't know, a sensitizer or a booster or whatever. Um, so notice how we have it in the outside hole and up the front, I put in the middle hole. Okay, so that gives us our, our slight taper on the inside. If the sheep are just sliding away on you and you want to narrow it up a little bit just quickly, we go to the middle hole and the inside hole there. And then all of a sudden you're all sorted. Okay, so that's our lock. We'll go through the width adjustment later. Um, now we've got our three-way draft here. So we've got these removable panels here. They're great if you want to have access to the head okay so you can get in there to do your mouthing um, uh, blood testing all sorts of things there's so many jobs that you can do with a combi clamp sometimes i might just put it in there it still gives me access while i'm using the clamp but it also blocks the gap off okay from from uh, the sheep trying the gap now i'll put that back there just so as it looks Drafting, all it is is a slight tug this way, okay, and that makes that gate move. So we're not trying to push it over and pull it like this. All it is is just a slight tug 
let the springs above the hinges work okay nice and simple of course we've got the the near side here um, and that's easy okay now so that's your standard unit and your three-way draft we've covered a few points there the other features now just while we're here I'd like to go over um, a few of the main points the combi clamp is way affordable okay um, it's all modulated so you can add pieces on as you need them as just you, you might lease a block and you need wheels you can just buy a wheel kit you don't have to sell your original combi clamp to start with and start all over again you might need curves um, you can do all of that so it's modulated um, it's <laughs> you've seen me use it okay I can put my hands in the pockets and and catch sheep and let them go hands free it's the most underrated um, feature of the combi clamp because while a sheep's in there you've stopped it you can handle it you can put tags in you can reload your applicator when while you're letting a sheep go and catching the next one um, the quiet factor is the big thing okay now I'm just going to open this gate here now 90% of the jobs that we do in a combi clamp we do with that gate open the anti-jump rail forward okay the only time we have that back is if we're getting in to do any dagging just to keep the rail out of the way of your face okay um, so that means that that gate stays open so while I'm here all I'm doing is stopping the sheep processing it drafting it letting it go so I've got my hands ready to do anything I want to with the sheep once you've got them caught stand on it with two feet okay that's really important okay so remember I can walk from one end of the clamp to the other without losing the sheep and if I want to let it go stand to the inside let it go catch and stand on it again you don't want to be standing on this all day with one foot okay that's an experience people that might be using it okay so you need once you've got it caught don't be scared to lean on this cushion get nice and close to the sheep nice and cuddly okay um, but otherwise that's 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 pretty much it I mean the ability to multitask the no noise the um, the flow because there's nothing going you know nothing smashing them in the face with gates or ear rams or anything like that okay um, I think the secret to combi clamp success so far over the last 18 years is it's the quiet and everything like that um, the affordability we've kept the price down and the other one is Tony and I we've sold our big farm and gone to a small farm because we realized that combi clamp and our distributors need more of our support okay and that's why we've gone ahead in leaps and bounds over the last four or five years okay so so that's great um, now so that's locked so you can lock your sheep in there and go and fill up so what we're going to do is we're just going to sneak down down the part Sally oh here we go yep yep just before we get there um, we've got a couple of questions come in um, Warren would like to know, he's already got a combi clamp, he wants to know what the price is of the three-way draft edition. Oh, where does he live? What that's country? A question. <laughs> that's That's probably what, one of the reasons I definitely want to jump in and say, if you want any pricing stuff, you have to realise that there is a freight difference. Um, so New Zealand, North Island, that's where we manufacture, that'll be one price, then we've got South Island, then we've got Australia. So if you want to know a price, we can give you a price, that's fine, but we just need to know where you are. Well, North or South Island, Australia, uh, Australia is all the same price. WA and Eastern States are the same price. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm no, I don't know what the pounds no and <laughs> pennies and whatever, okay? We, we deal in dollars, not pounds. Yeah, we deal in dollars. So, so um, you'd need to get hold of Richie uh, if you're in Scotland or Richie sell wholesale to their distributors so look it's not hard to get hold of them or uh, get hold of Myrna and Marlin um, in Canada and they can sort you out a price so yeah there's our contacts page on the on the website we've also got our pricing page on the website um, 
that's just been updated just recently so you don't have to give away your date of birth and your passport number to get a price okay you can get prices on your own and if you want us to call back or you want an order that's all cool um, then we just need your name and your address okay and your email address and your phone number but getting back to it um, the three-way draft unit which is just the addition here um, in New Zealand in New Zealand, uh, that's 1050 And in Australia, uh, it's 1160 $1,160. Now, all of our prices that we're going to be quoting today, or this week, um, will be excluding GST, okay? Yeah. Okay, so remember, New Zealand and Australia, all made in New Zealand, and made with New Zealand steel. That will be changing in the next six weeks, incidentally. We'll be moving to using Australian uh, RHS, so our hollow section. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, one other question, Adam would like to know what is the most common add-on you would say, Wayne? Oh, I tell you what. Um, what's been going out? Look, Australia has gone ahead in leaps and bounds to New Zealand. Um, I tell you what, as far as combi clamp, they love them. The most common extras that are going out at the moment. Um, I am a Kiwi, and it sounds like I'm batting for the Aussies, but. But uh, look, your standard unit, your three-way draft, your way gear attachment, so you can put your load bars underneath, and a gadget holder. Um, we're going to be using that particular unit for our demonstration just shortly. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that combination of parts gives you the most versatility. Um, you, can do, you can do everything. Mm. The with that. Yeah, well, the beauty of, of it is that standard unit draft, way gear attachments, gadget holder, You've got everywhere to hang all your stuff on the gadget holder. Um, you can drench, you can vaccinate, you can weigh. Now, how many of you at home do all of that through three different apparatuses? A working race, and if you're in Australia, or a drenching race. Whereas, when you've got a combi clamp, you don't pre-draft your mob, you run them all in, you run them through, you weigh them if they're underweight, you give them a jab and you draft them off. Okay, or a drench or whatever. Um, so yeah. And if they're fat, then you give them a dag before give them you a dag, draft yeah. them off and put them on the truck. Yeah. Well, me personally, I try to keep the number of jobs down rather than having five or six different jobs because I'm not that smart to remember to do everything. It's quite tricky. So if you're weighing lambs, me personally, I prefer to to um, weigh, drench anything that's underweight, draft them off. I leave the dagging for when the truck comes because. They've got to be in the yards to empty out before they go on the truck. I can do a semi load of lambs in, oh, geez, depending on how many you're going, but I mean, it doesn't take long at all. Well inside the time that they need to be in the yards to empty out. So I generally do them on the day. Then I've got a clear run of just dagging and the faster they go through, the better they flow. But we will be talking about flow when we get over there and run a few sheep through. Um, yeah, yeah, so, cool. no, that's great. Sweet. I reckon we'll go down Parts Alley now. Yeah, we'll go down Parts Alley. Oh, some of our parts aren't in the alley, but over here. Oh, look, we we're starting to get... umbrella for the uh, camera. I tell you what, we're starting to get a bit of a shower of rain. This is awesome. Um, two and a half months ago, this place looked like it had been sprayed with Roundup. So, we've got our quarter curve there, okay? For a quarter curve, you get an inner and an outer, okay? and your four pins and your spreader bar. Um, it can be used as a hock rail or a spreader bar down on the ground. So that's set up left-handed. Um, so yeah, there's no left and right-handed curves. It just depends on which way they enter, okay? Um, so yeah, that's obviously a left-handed one. Now, over here, we'll go down the parts alley. We might come back here a little bit later. Um, because there's different techniques for drenching and that. Now, so what we've got here is we've got the wheel set, so that's if you want to um, move it from block to block, and um, we get quite a few people that just want to put it on a set of wheels to put it inside, one so it either doesn't get stolen, or people worry about its longevity outside. Now, everything is hot dip galvanized, okay? And that black material we use on the wall is plastic, okay? Now, we import that from Germany. Um, we don't use, I wouldn't say any, our tech screws and rivets are probably the only thing that comes from China, okay? All the materials we use are either New Zealand steel or Australian steel. Uh, the rubber comes from the States. 
um, yeah so now that's is actually excellent so you get your your axle your tie downs your drawbar and this little thing here that's that's our handpiece holder okay now you can't don't want to leave your handpiece on a 44 gallon drum okay because you are you you knock it over and your handpiece and you break a comb a comb is worth fifty dollars roughly that's about fifty bucks so that's the price of one comb well worth it okay now what we've got is the way gear attachments now some people get confused with the way gear attachments because they think that they're getting the scales okay so you're not getting the scales the the purpose of this is to sit the approach race like what we're working over there on here because we need a gap okay our load bars bolt on here at both ends these bits here this is that there's a long one of these see the little edge on there that's great because when you hook this on to your handler the catchy part of it that extends out to cover uh, the leg breaking gap that's here okay so there's a long one for the back um, there's the short one for the front that extends out into the draft all your bolts are there to bolt your load bars to there and of course on the underside of the standard unit every handler goes out that you can add scales later even if you don't want them straight away okay and also included in the uh, the uh, way gear attachments is the access ramp now the purpose of this is because the scales lift the the handler up off the ground we've got this access ramp brilliant make it nice and comfortable for the operator okay as we get down here we just swing around a bit more viv now this is our gadget holder okay so that's that's the trough that holds on to all your gears we'll show you one over there that's that's set up um, now this is where the gadget holder is actually an add-on to the way gear attachments over there so we just sneak back here viv just quickly so that socket there is where the gadget the gadget holder stands in okay these two sockets here okay and they've got they've got uh, wing bolts to do those up now you do not we get a few people that don't want to weigh um, but love the idea of the gadget holder so it's something that's a little bit <laughs> tricky we haven't got a bracket to join the gadget holder to the standard unit only without the weigh gear um, the main reason for that is if we get people that are connecting the gadget holder to the base of the handler and they connect it to the to the way gear attachments that'll mark up your weights so we haven't done that you may have to uh, adapt something if you are not weighing it away so it is available for those people that don't want to um, that don't want to weigh but you'll have to do something yourself okay so that's all done and dusted that's easy now this thing is the best invention since sliced bread you wouldn't even know what it is if I didn't tell you okay it is a anti-backing ramp now the reason why we've got the rubber here is that my race might be 500 yours might be 550 Fiona's might be might be 450 it means that you're not skinning any legs now this is 300 high now that is the secret okay um, there's hock rails there's flippy things that stick out that you can bolt on your side of your races and all sorts of things um, if you have a hock rail too high they put their heads underneath it flippy bits that come out the side I just don't like at all because if a sheep goes halfway past what happens the first thing it does it digs into the stomach or the ribs and causes bruising I mean these lambs that we're going to run through they're my lambs okay and I don't like bruised lambs on my kill sheet so that that's that's great I'll show you about the positioning of that when we get over to the to our uh, demonstration area or or the ram paddock okay now as the years have gone by we have actually um, listened to our clients and some of our big lamb finishers that are finishing 20 to 35 40 thousand lambs a couple of them had shortened up the that red cushion wall on that handler over there they'd actually cut the bottom of it to lower it down so as we could get in 
to easily vaccinate young lambs. So that's where it came. So we made this lamb cushion wall. So that's 125 mils lower than the standard wall. Um, and we'll probably chuck it in there, even though these lambs are 50 odd kilos, we'll chuck it in there and show you how, how it gets on. Um, and something more recently um, is our wool classing wall. Okay, that means that the rubber on here is for the grip. Okay, but this side you can see feet, you can uh, side sample, you can have a look at the wool for classing in merinos. So this combi clamp. That combi clamp sheep handler is designed to be able to handle dorpers to merinos to perendales to crossbreds to any breed. It's it's not a it's not a specialised crutching machine or a drenching or a vaccinating or animal health. It does most things well. If you'd like me to show, if you'd like me to show you. Uh, a procedure on sheep look ask those questions and we can go from there yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so definitely um i think a lot of people's questions do usually aim at tasks that you're doing how do you do this how do you do that i mean we're going to do we're definitely going to do drenching and weighing and vaccinating definitely definitely yes, yes. uh dagging yes yes okay uh feet Yes. Okay. All of those things. If there's something that I haven't mentioned, ask because there is a way. There's yeah. always a way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, something I've got to, I've got to say. Um, I'm going to show you how I use the combi clamp. Trust me. There's no right or wrong way of using a combi clamp. Um, it doesn't make a very good fishing rod, but you, <laughs> it does everything. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look. Um, I drench one particular way, drenching and vaccinating, um, and which side of the sheep you prefer to stand on is entirely up to you. But we might we'll, we'll, we'll run a few sheep through here. Yeah. Um, and I am go, I am right-handed. Everything I do, I do with my right hand. Okay. Drench, vaccinate, bear, everything. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I've got it set up over there. So I will be drenching with my right hand. Now most people are going to look at that and go, how on earth are you going to do it? So what we're going to do is we're going to run a few sheep up yep. and we'll do that now. Is there any other components we haven't done, Fee? Uh, have we done the curves? We've done the curves earlier. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's it. And just another note, if you've got friends that probably don't follow Combi Camp already, but you think that they might benefit from watching, uh, might just be interesting for them, just share this um, live stream on your, on your own profile and uh, that'll get it out there for lots of people to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm normally used to talking to people on the phone. My phone rings, not constantly, but a fair bit, mm. and I'm helping people all the time. Not, not just helping people to decide whether they buy a combi clamp or something else. What I want to get across in this video is the 1800 number that's on that combi clamp doesn't go to Taiwan, a call centre. Okay, it comes to me. So the Australian clients, 1800 number rings me. But with this COVID, um, I'm stuck in New Zealand. This is why we're doing this Facebook Live. If you ring and I'm, I miss your call, ex expect a call from an international number, okay? <laughs> the number Quite often time. you don't want to answer when I ring you back because you think I'm a telemarketer. So, yeah. Um, yeah. If you ring the 0800 number for New Zealand, you do, you get me. Um, I know I've, I've been around this stuff since I was seven. So there's yeah. not a lot that I don't know. Um, but yeah, I get a few curly questions, but yeah. I've got this guy on speed dial. Yeah, so. yeah, so that's, that's easy, that's easy. Right, I, I reckon we're gonna take that, that bank coat off that back plant, because we don't need that, and we'll come over here. You're not gonna trip over that wire, eh, Viv? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Lindley's going to chase some sheep up and we will so right okay now so we've got a few few lambs there um, now just 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 while Lindley's chasing those up or Lindley and Fee are both getting those those few lambs up can you see that anti backing ramp in that race now notice I haven't got it right at the start 
I've got it halfway up the panel. The secret to the anti-backing ramp is not to have it right at the start of the single file. You want to have it um, at least part way up. Okay, because when it's part way up, you don't want any backing right at the start of a, or, or when there's any change, you know, change and changing from open panels. Notice that's why I haven't even got the hot rail in. Okay, I only have the hot rail in there if I'm doing a lot of multitasking. Okay, now, just drenching. You you can you can leave your drench gun over there but I still prefer to have it on my back okay I'm a bit old school as I said earlier there's no right or wrong way now what I'm gonna do is I'll just back that one out and then I'm gonna press zero okay I'm obviously 19 kilos heavier than Lindley because she had it zeroed with her okay now I've got to zero that with. There we go. Now. I know that that hasn't been set up with uh, true test scales on it. It's not 99 kilos. Okay. We've had that, that set of scales. This is a little faux pas on our part, okay? We've used this indicator with another brand of scales and and we've had to change the bar rating so that's a little bit of a fail on our part but that's all right so what this is reading is this is reading twice the rate okay so as we go we can drench Okay, now the biggest thing with this this drenching is the fact that I'm catching them in the first half of the clamp and I'm drenching them with my right hand. Okay, notice where my left foot is going. It's, I've got both feet on the pressure plate. Okay, and as I go to let it go, I put my left foot onto the resting plate and put my hand on the top. Okay, and then that's that's clear. Okay. Now I'm ready. Now I can lock that sheep in there and it's stuck, okay? So I'm not on it. This wind is getting a bit windy, so there might be a bit of um, background noise, that's for sure. Uh, so I can go back and get sheep to come up comfortably and then come back here, unlock it and carry on. Okay, so so drenching is really, really easy. Now typically most people would want to have the sheep coming from the right hand side and catch them in the bench with their right hand. Okay? Now um, that's quite that would mean that the sheep would be coming this way and they'd be catching them with their head out here and drenching. Trust me, this is actually not a bad bad way of doing it. Um, facing them. I can see the oncoming sheep. I can see what the dog's chewing up down the boat. Um, yeah, and but the biggest thing, what we want to do is sneak around there, Viv. Okay, we're going to come around here. Now, everybody's questions, and I'm expecting them, is how do you get them to run? Now, down there at the far end, I don't know if you can see, Viv, those half a dozen that we've just left out, they're right out the front. Now what we want is these sheep that are in this race, before they get to me, the very scary me, is to have, that they can focus on those sheep out in front. Too many people have it pointing towards the wool shed or at a wall or another fence going across, just shortly out in front and the sheep bear off one way or another. The best thing to get the best out of your combi clamp and with a, a better chance of being able to work it on your own is one, anti-backing ramp and two, 
having sheep out in front. Not necessarily bunched right up against the against this three-way draft, um, but but there's got to be room for the sheep. There's got to be room for the sheep to exit. Okay. So as they come in, okay, nice and easy. Okay. Now we have a problem, Houston. My audio cable is around the dagging plant. So what have I done? I've just locked that sheep in there and casually come around here. Very easy. Now, drenching, easy. I originally designed the combi clamp for dagging sheep, okay? Um, 11,000 ewes, 14,000 lambs. We dagged them all. Oh, look, we dagged them in November when we gave the lambs their first drench while they're on mum. Um, and then, then we moved to, uh, the next time they were in the yards was weaning time. We'd, we'd draft through our drafting race and all male lambs would come through here and they'd be weighed. Um, yeah, so there's lots of things you can, you can, you can set it up in your system to do the whole lot or specialise for one job when it comes around to weaning. A lot of people in Australia are using them for their whole weaning process because we can handle a great big ewe and a little lamb. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can also mouth old ewes and draft. Okay, nice and easy. And we, when we let when we let a sheep go, I I don't let that sheep go until that next one is looking. It's looking, it will come. If it's looking out over the side, just just wait a little bit. Now notice how I'm catching them further back. Now what that means is that the bum of the sheep here is at the end of the tunnel. So that minimizes, so by catching them early in the clamp, by, use, by using this, catching in this bit here, it minimizes the risk of them jumping out. That is the other advantage of this gadget holder, okay? It, it not only holds on to foot pairs and vaccinating guns and pliers and all sorts of stuff and aerosols and tags and everything like that. It also acts as a stop to stop sheep from getting out. Okay? Now, um, if I'm mouthing older ewes and stuff like that, you could catch them with their head out the end. Okay? This gives us the ability to catch them there and then pull them up here okay and we can draft okay. okay now okay so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut that gate off there um, now if we want to do feet we pop this back here, okay, out of the way. Now those rails have got to be firm to get in. If you get them in, you have struggled to get them in, they're not wrong, they're right, because I don't like them rattling, okay? So you might have to stretch them or squeeze them together to get them into holes. That's the main reason why they're like that, because otherwise these rattle if those are loose. If you have got an earlier one and they're a bit loose, just give the legs a bit of a bend to get them to jam in there, okay? Now I've got that lamb, it's, remember this is a lamb, so so these lambs have got short legs, so that's why they kick a bit when you try to pick them up, okay? Put you on the knee, push that one off, add this one here, okay? Bigger sheep stand higher, okay? So then they're not quite so stressed about it, okay? Um, and then also we go to the front. Drop that out of the way. And then we can hook the front feet out here, okay? If you're doing a lot of checking of feet, just, you know, shaping and stuff like that, probably the wool classing wall is probably an option, okay? Um, and also, I mean, blood testing rams, pulpating rams, checking for brucellosis, all those sort of things. Um, vets just love it, makes the job a lot easier. Okay. Uh huh. 
What have we got there? Okay, so this one's about weighing. Um, yes. So, if I move on the platform, our combi gives a different weight. Is there anything I'm doing wrong? So that'll come down to the okay, setting right. up the low bar. Right, okay, yep. Depending on whether you've got the way gear frame like what we've got here, I'll just let that sheep go. It's going to get a bit bored. Oh, matey, there you go. Right, I'll open that up. Okay, now, if you've got this frame here, that means you've got the latest way gear attachment. If you've got some big long plates under it, um, we get a bit of movement because it's more reliant on the surface that you're on. Okay, okay. Now, we're here in a paddock that's not concrete, what have you. Um, I go on here and then we go down to zero here. So I'm at this end and if I walk to the other end, I haven't tested this. So when I'm walking, see how it, 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 it moves? If I get to the other end and it's still on zero, that's cool. Remember, um, it's, it's entire, if, you, if you've been away on holiday, and you've eaten far too much, the big best secret is to put your bathroom scales on the carpet because you don't weigh as much. It's all reliant on what, what it's sitting on. Okay, so this is on just average. You've got to make sure things aren't touching. Um, you know, like in here, okay, make sure you've got that good finger gap there and make sure that your plate is not hasn't built up with any materials underneath. Okay, so there's daylight all the way down here. Okay. Um, when you're walking around on, on your combi clamp, the weight will be fluctuating all the time on free mode. Okay. If you're used to working a normal weight crate that automatically goes beep and pops you up the answer, you're not used to seeing the floating. Okay. So when something's on automatic weighing and pops up a weight, um, that's taking an average of all the fluctuations. Okay. So if you're if your scales are moving, if you're going down here and it's zero here and you're up there by two kilos or down by two kilos, you've got to look at the surface that you're on, okay? Uh, or maybe you might be running 600 mil low bars. Now, what we've got here is we are running um, True Test MP800s, okay? So the, you see that this is going to be a hard one to show, but um, your meter long load bars like your Gallagher load bars I recommend the meter long load bars to people that are buying a new set I wouldn't go out and buy a brand new set of load bars to go under your shiny new combi clamp and buy 600s the clamp is 1200 mils wide okay so we've got me standing out here we've got the sheep in there um, if your finances are a little bit limiting and you can't buy a new set of load bars straight up, yeah, sure, use your 600 mil load bars until funds let you go to a, uh, the longer load bars. But your 600 mil load bars will come to, to here, so there'll be 300 out here, and then there'll be another, the other 300 will be under the sheet. So be sure that if you're using your existing 600 mil load bars, that you don't stand out here. Okay, when you're operating it, stand here and lean on the cushion so as you're inside the end of your load bars. Um, if you're going to be multitasking, like using, um, I got Lindley on here, she's drenching or vaccinating, I'm down here dagging, um, so there's the two of us on here, so we've got 160 odd kilos of body weight out here. If you're gonna do that, have two operators, yeah, definitely go the thousand mil load bars. Yeah, I hope that's answered your, answered your question. Um, if you've got the long load bars and it's still wobbly, it's not the combi clamp. It could be your load bars, but I'm picking, it's more likely to be the surface that you're sitting them on, okay? The, this new way gear frame that we're using now has minimized that because we're on we're on as ugly a ground as you can find. We're on a massive lean with everything's going on, and these are these are working fine. Okay. All right. What do we do now? Okay. Right. Um, what we might do is we might crank up the hemp piece, I reckon. Um, so 
Now, if you have a look at this pole, you might notice if you look up the top of it, let's go right up there. What is it? It's a drawbar off our wheel set. Now, so all I've done is I've donged in a piece of RHS, or no, a bit of round rod, okay, in the ground. I've fed my drawbar over the top. Um, I'm using a Heiniger 1 dagging plant. It's not an Evo for you Australians. Um, it's a one speed, so it only runs at 29.50 revs. And um, it's got a bit of oil on it, and we pull the cord, oh, and it goes. And there's your handpiece holder. It's not a switch, okay? No, no, don't need a, don't, it doesn't need to be a switch. Just somewhere where it's safe, okay? I can throw it in there and it's good. Master Foods to uh, barbecue sauce. Works better than oil. Um, uh, <laughs> it's a good one because when, when you're not using it, you shut it and it doesn't leak in your sharing box. Um, okay, not that I do a lot of dagging these days because I tell you what, Linley does most of it on our place now because I'm more focused on combi clamp itself and showing people how to do stuff. Right. Okay, now, remember this combi clamp is nice and soft on the animals because of that rubber belting there. Gives us a huge contact area, so the likes of dorpers and things like that, a um, lot of contact, a lot of grip, like a tractor tread on it, it works really well. Now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to take this little gate off, and we're going to run a few sheep through. I'm not going to drop that on my microphone cord, no. Woohoo. And now I'm just going to grab that. All right. Okay. Come on, baby. And I'm not allowed to cut my microphone cord either. Okay. Now. Because um, that's just about... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, I don't want to cut the microphone cord because it's wind. If you have to drop the microphone that's tucked up here, you will not be able to hear me. If you think the, the audio is bad now, you wait. Right. Just a little blow in there. Now, there are sheep in the race, okay? Then all I do is I stand on the inside there. I wait till that sheep's watching. And then do that. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Okay. And there. And then there. Come on, girl. Sit still. And then. Nah. Alright. There's a dirty one. Quiet, Kate! Down the, down the legs, around there, handpiece upside down, down the inside of that leg, and then a little bit of a blow there. It's not a crutching machine, okay? Um, Alright for dagging, and that, a little bit down the inside of the leg down there, it's good enough for pre-shearing. Open the gate again, now that, that spit the bags out. And then straight in here. Okay. Pre-shearing crutch or something like that, just a, a slight tidy up. Notice how I catch it really, really early and then ease it in. That is a big plus with a combi clamp. So catch it really early and then ease it in like that with a few bounces. Don't forget to stand on it with two feet, okay? Now in New Zealand, our wool's not worth very much, okay? I think we got $2.10 a kilo for white wool. So, I know all these dags are going in here, but I'm not too concerned about it. They're not worth anything. Okay, I'll hang that back up on that handpiece holder. I tell you what, they're not very popular. They don't sell very much, but... Man, if I had that sitting here and I bumped the flexi, that handpiece would come straight over and it'll smash a comb on any of this. Okay? We just grab that. Um. So that gate, we, look, when you first get a combi clamp, shut the gate between sheep. It's easy. You just shut it, but the only trouble is 
those sheep have all just backed up now now that I've shut that gate so that's why I prefer to dig with a gate open there are a few of you out there will probably say you can't do that with your sheep because they're mad but I tell you what they're a lot happier when they've got another sheep in front of them it's rather than a gate being slammed in front of their face okay all right um, yes you're going to start thinking about doing some weighing yes is the combi eid compatible oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah just because we don't have electronics and hydraulics and things like that um yes it's definitely eid compatible and our one over in the shed um our quite old one um we've got our panel hanging from our gadget holder here the reading range on it is fine so we hang it from the from the back of the gadget Gadget, uh, the gadget holder so it's hanging down here so it's not getting beaten up and it's not in an area where it can get knocked around um, and you can set that up to use that as a trigger um, for your weighing um, and you can put tags in the only thing is if you've got your panel reader when you're putting your tags in you can't have all your tags in the tray here because it gets really really confused okay that's the only time you'll still have to have the old 44 gallon drum over here if you're putting electronic tags into adult sheep in the combi clamp okay so just to just to go on from that a little bit we our drafting is manual okay so we can't draft automatically on electronic tags so what that means is that an indicator an indicator will tell you which way to draft yeah, don't 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 worry about it because if you if it comes up and it goes beep and it tells you what it is you can then um, draft accordingly it'll tell you left right or straight ahead okay so that's pretty easy yeah okay so so now what we've got is vaccinating oh we haven't got a needle in this just incidentally um, if we're dealing with little lambs and the lambs are way down here that's when we would have the lamb cushion wall we might bring that in in a minute um, generally speaking with adult sheep I'll make sure the jaws on top of the red cushion here and then come in behind the ear okay I like that, that hose is not stuck on there very well okay so and then all we do is form a tent there bang hand up here and those two sheep are jammed in the race there, let me. Okay, nice and easy, and in there. Okay. Okay, so what I try to do is use these fingers to part the wool off this wool. Okay, in here, and part the wool in, in there. Okay, now. It, I was watching a YouTube video of combi clamp. I was just doing a bit of nosing myself, and then over in the UK they were just jabbing in the middle of the ribs here, and they were doing they quoted 2,000 in an hour. But let's put it this way: vaccinating is one of those funny things. You're either a person where you want to uh, form a tent and do it properly under the skin and not on the meat, or you're a person that just wants to jab them. I mean, you can use a combi clamp in whichever manner you want, um, and this is why I said earlier. You can do anything with a combi clamp there's no right or wrong way there are some ways that are a bit more a bit faster some people are buying the combi clamp for speed um, and ease um, the younger version the older version are buying the combi clamp because of the ease these sheep could be dripping wet and i could handle them to drench them or something and i would still be dry okay um, get your dog trained up you know in the yards to get things over the ramp that anti backing ramp down there if a dog can get a sheep over there um, they can it's like a gate for a dog okay yeah that's excellent um, yeah also back lining um, back lining vaccinating pulpating rams uh, blood testing drafting um, unlock, draft, watch, wait, 
draft. Now, while they're being weighed, I can I can handle them. Okay. Remember, I'm zeroed out on the machine. Okay, so that means that I can condition, I can figure out what the yield is roughly before the weights even popped up on the screen. Okay. These sheep are running quite well now because because they've got sheep out in front. That's the biggest thing. You can forget everything I say today. That if you're going to buy a combi clamp, you need to have sheep out in front. Okay. And also got this drafting handle here that we can draft out this side as well. Now, I tell you, that's. That, that, that sheep coming in there, I'll let that one go. Right. That sheep coming in there like that, I've got my anti-jump rail back from when I was dagging, okay? Um, so that gave it the opportunity to jump. The gadget holder stopped it from trying to get out there, but do you know what? Do you know what actually stopped it getting away? I'm not worried about working any switches or anything like that. I've still got my hands free to handle another sheep. Nice and easy, okay? Notice how that moulds around the side. Yeah. Yeah, very easy. Okay, um, what we've got here is we've got the we've got the lamb cushion wall. <laughs> Honestly, the pins are that critical that they have to go down dead plumb. If you've got it on a slight angle, it will stop. But, and we haven't got any sheep left, that's a bit of a bugger. Um, because what this means is that when you've got uh, young lambs coming in, or flighty lambs or whatever, the main thing to do is to put that in there, and that in there, so we've formed the tunnel, and now you handle your lamb in the first half, just like we talked about earlier. Now this this here, then we have got clients that have this down here as low as this, so as that even with adult sheep. I know it looks really low, but for people that have had a combi clamp for a while, some of them are just using them all the time with this wall rather than the standard wall because it's so much easier to get into vaccinating, okay? Um, and handling. Remember, I'm here and they can see their mates down the end, so that gives us the ability to for them to want to go that way versus coming out here. If you've got a wall or something or a shed, something there that's causing, they'll be wanting for other ways to get out, so really important. Um, now, so, so what we've also got is uh, your lead up. What I'd like to do is actually see um, we need at least two and a half meters of single file uh, now that there uh, I'm trying to get that out doesn't actually work with, very well with these panels that's that anti backing ramp now it takes different it'll take any sort of uh any width race but it's actually i call it an anti-backing ramp but it's actually a training device and you look at it and think why is it a training device we're training our sheep to go forward so this is why our older ewes as soon as you get them over there um, they know they can't get out so we're training them that there's only one way out of this race and that's through that combi clamp okay so um, positioning of it trial it to see where you want it I don't like having it at the start of course as I mentioned earlier because 
there's too much indecision or two sheep trying to come in better to be part way up if we have it up the front if we have it up the front here it's a decoy trap because it keeps that sheep there to try and suck the others up okay so um, yeah it works really well uh, yeah that rubber on the floor but yeah definitely have some single file uh, there's another one there's a other, other things like should we have curved races the curves are better the curves are better but curved races are only I only use them if it's absolutely necessary I like the vision of any sheep in this pen out here behind us to be able to see those sheep out the front um, but curves are really good if you're in a tight situation yeah cool all right well this might be a rural broadband thing um, but if there's any new questions popping up I'm not seeing them right now um, that being said that being said we have been at this an hour and we've covered a lot of a lot of stuff we have covered a fair bit of stuff yep and on Wednesday we'll be back and we will change the load bars that are on those scales so you can actually see the real weight rather than those Double. lambs being 100 kilos <laughs> when they're not they're about 50 odd yeah. Um, so yeah we'll be back here on Wednesday for the sheep but tomorrow tomorrow is cattle yeah. tomorrow I, I've got a bit over four ton of cattle crushers with four crushers sitting on there or a bit under four ton total sitting on my lawn okay so we will run we will go over the features and yes if you have got cattle please do come back tomorrow yeah um we have spent a bit of time trying to think you know if we were at field days what are the typical questions that people ask us um we've probably answered a, a few of them yeah oh, we haven't done too bad um, yeah but something that i don't think we did talk about is people often say does your leg get tired when you're using a compact tape because you've got that leg that's doing a lot of that work um, it's only that one leg is doing the catching but your body is doing the holding so um, and it depends on different jobs you're using different legs and some of the jobs you can you can swap but honestly I can dag sheep all day and my legs are fine if I'm at the field days talking to people standing still because rather than operating the clamp that's actually harder on my legs standing still so yeah don't 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 be worried about that at all um, I was talking to a guy the other day he actually rung about a cattle crush but he has a question that he always asks whenever he's looking at new equipment um, and that's what what maintenance is there to do what's the what's the first thing to break he actually managed to get out but, <laughs> um, but he said what what maintenance is there and that's a key question for him uh, on our cattle equipment we have an oil can on a combi clamp we don't have an oil can there's no grease nipples there's nothing you with the plastic the plastics all you don't have to stain it or do anything like that like we did with our earlier plywood ones you don't need to apply oil um, I mean I do you I do employ human beings so we get the odd mist weld but it's very very few and far between um, that we might have a break or something like that but but generally speaking um, breakdowns nah yeah yeah compared to a pneumatic or electronic or bells and whistles should something go wrong with a combi clamp most farmers could fix it okay and you wouldn't have to let all those sheep out of the yards go yeah. okay um, and all our all our RHS on the combi clamp is 25 mil RHS uh, 25 by 2.5 2 2.5 2 2 mil wall thickness which is right up there for the for the 25 mil RHS um, so yeah we don't use light materials yeah probably our biggest issue is the weight of the clamp itself at 125 ish kilos yeah um, if it's too heavy buy a set of wheels okay uh, for the Australian clients we've also got our ground lowering trailer which is our big one with our roof that the whole trailer lowers to the ground um, to suit those uh, the bigger properties over there um, we don't build them in New Zealand anymore uh, it wasn't the need um, but yeah I mean granted we've been selling these for 17 years easily 
um, and some of the earlier models had a different type of rubber um, some even might remember them it was sort of like an orange prickly thing sandpaper um, sandpaper <laughs> we, we, we wiped that stuff and got the the new black um, black rubber and there are a few people out there that might still have the orange stuff which has now gone pink um, and that can be replaced with the new black rubber we do have um, yeah extras of those in the workshop yeah well, the, um, the floors would probably be the first thing to uh, to wear out there's a trick there <laughs> <laughs> um, and and there's also and the, the, the rubber on the walls fine that lasts for years and years and yeah. years I still haven't had to replace any of those black ones. Uh, the black ones and they've been out for at least at least 10 yeah. okay so it'll be the floor yeah, yeah. the floor is really easy though because generally speaking it's wearing out um, at the back of the sheet on the back of the feet that's where it's wearing yeah take the tech screws out turn it around and put it back down it's that easy and that's just that's just another example of how simple the combi camp is but yes. how how easy it makes it and how reliable it makes it and don't forget uh, we don't make a left or a right handed if you want to be working on the right hand side of the sheep on that side all you do is disconnect your draft and your approach ray spin it around and hook it all back together okay um, those gates on the approach race are interchangeable um, so yeah just depends on what you want to do you might have a left hander in the team he can't get out of dagging sheep okay all you've got to do is turn it around well look, I reckon we've, we've had an hour and what we're going to do is um, we'll come back on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, if you've got any questions in the meantime, okay, ask them. Comment on this video because yeah. we will keep an eye on those and we will pick them up and bring them in on Wednesday. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I mean anybody that's got some problems, um, you know, like I don't want to see a combi clamp sitting in a shed not being used. If it is... You haven't rung me for help okay um, but honestly the feedback that we've been getting from uh, from my Australian clients and that at field days has been phenomenal I had no idea that it would be that good I'm quite critical of my own product because I'm the designer of it but uh, the feedback we've been getting has been fantastic yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm like a kid at Christmas when I have someone give me some feedback and, and how they love it um, it's it, it makes me feel good because I'm so proud of the product and I'm proud yeah. of what this yeah. silly bugger managed to do. Yeah, uh, it's worked, it's worked. It's been a team effort from the clients giving back feedback. A lot of the changes that we've had over the years uh, or, or bringing on new add-ons um, has been predominantly client demand and so we've had to man um, manufacture product to suit their needs. So, yeah. So, that's excellent. Oh, look, thank you very much for participating and uh, and share it around and we'll get those load bars changed over, the setting, and we might be able to bit of a close-up on, on the scales on Wednesday. You don't get to have bloopers with live, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank See you. Ya. See you later.